Hey out there, Jennifer LeClaire here, senior leader of the Awakening House of Prayer, founder of the Ignite Apostolic Prophetic Network. I am here today with something that has been on my heart for the past several weeks, and I just really wanted to study it a little more. I really wanted to be responsible and sort of cast this in a right way. I wanted to make sure my intercessors were on point, ready to cover this, because this is... Well, it's going to be controversial. It's the Bible, and the Bible is controversial. We're going to be looking today at what the Bible says about warlocks, wizards, sorcerers, masquerading as prophets. The Bible calls these false prophets. A false prophet is one who sets out to deceive. And so this has really been on my heart because there's so much talk about witches, but we don't talk as much about warlocks as if only the females can go astray, as if only the females are in this deception and releasing witchcraft, as if there are only females in this Christian uh, movement of dark, deep deception. But there are warlocks, and, 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 and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you ahead of time, please go ahead and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray for me, because this is going to make a lot of people mad. This is going to make a lot of Christian warlocks mad. But guess what? No weapon formed against me can prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned. I break right now every word curse, every hex, every vex, every incantation, every potion, every spell, every expression of witchcraft. And I break every evil decree in the name of Jesus. And I bind the monitoring spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who raised from the dead and who lives on the inside of me. Amen. That is how you do it cover yourself. We're going to talk about seven ways to recognize warlocks masquerading as prophets. A prophet is one who sets out to deceive, but there are many kinds of false prophets. There are many synonyms in the Bible. Some are sorcerers, some are wizards, some are fortune tellers, whichever way you want to call it. These are deep, dark practicers of divination. All right, let's get into this because we're hearing a lot about Christian witches in the body of Christ. And again, not as much talk about warlocks. The Bible talks to us, shows us what a warlock looks like in the New Testament. And we find this, I'm not going to the Old Testament. There's plenty in the Old Testament about false prophets, but this particular uh, passage of scripture really, uh, in my view and my um, study, really shows some of the characteristics of warlocks masquerading as false prophets. Now, there are other signs of what a warlock is. There's other ways to discern a warlock. But I am talking about the warlocks in the church who are masquerading as prophets. Do you understand the distinction? So there are real prophets. Ephesians 4, verse 11, Jesus, when he ascended on high, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. There are still prophets today. If there's true there's always false. And so there are warlocks, uh, diviners, soothsayers who are masquerading as prophets and they have nice suits and they wear big smiles and they draw big crowds. But guess what? Their end is destruction. Jesus is going to say in that, to them in that day, depart from me. I never knew you. Did we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Depart from me. I never knew you. Now, I don't know if I can even get through all of these uh, signs today, all of them. We're going to try. I might have to come back tomorrow uh, and do some more, uh, but we're going to give it a shot. And we're looking at Acts 13, verses 6 through 7 is where we'll begin. And the Bible says, when they passed through the entire island of Cyprus, as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain Jewish wizard or sorcerer or false prophet named Bar Jesus. Notice here how this is the Amplified Translation, and notice how the Amplified translates it. Because just in case you didn't know, a wizard is the same as a sorcerer, and a sorcerer is the same as a false prophet, and a false prophet is the same as a wizard, and these are warlocks. Now, I know the warlocks are going to burn up my email telling me why I'm wrong telling me how I've missed it. You know what? They'll go back to the word and get saved. Amen. I'm praying for the warlocks to be saved. I'm not trying to pick a fight. 
I am trying to do what God has called me to do. He has called me to be a watchman on the wall. He called me very young in the Lord on Ezekiel 3 and Ezekiel 33. Sound the alarm, blow the trumpet. I've been in this mode all week and I'm going to stay in it today. Let's start again reading this. When they had passed through the entire island of Cyprus, as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain Jewish wizard or sorcerer or false prophet named Bar Jesus. Verse 7, he was closely associated with the proconsul. Isn't that interesting? This false prophet, this wizard, had ties into the government. Wow, isn't that interesting? He was closely associated with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, who was an intelligent and sensible man of sound understanding. Apparently, he had no discernment because he had a wizard next to him. He summoned to him Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God concerning salvation in the kingdom of God attained through Christ. So this man, he, he was like he had uh, many counselors. He, he had this wizard, but he also wanted to hear from Paul and Barnabas. So he was a man of intelligence. And that is the problem with many people in the world today is they'll let the prophet come prophesy, but they'll let the wizard come prophesy too. They'll let the warlock do an enchantment too. We have to get away from this syncretism where we are worshiping many gods and it's all, can't we just all get along, coexist? That's bogus. There's one way to Jesus Christ. There is one way to the Father, and his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you don't know Jesus, I want you to go to jenniferleclair.org slash peacewithgod and get right with the Lord. Learn about what he's done for you. Now, notice his name was Bar-Jesus. Now, many war this guy's name was Bar-Jesus. His name was Bar-Jesus. Many warlocks and sorcerers and false prophets and diviners under the name, they utter the name of Jesus from their lips, but their motives are wicked. Listen, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is going to make it into heaven. And not everybody who says, Jesus, Jesus, is actually an ambassador for the kingdom of God, is actually a minister of reconciliation, is actually one whom you can trust. You know, anybody can say the name Jesus. That doesn't make them true and authentic. You know, I used to go to, before I was saved, I went to, uh, psychic shops because I was so hungry for the supernatural and to hear from the Lord and I didn't know any better but in the psychic shops there were pictures of Jesus and there was you know scriptures on the wall so there there you know it's it's all deception you can name Jesus all day long and not be saved amen there's a lot of people sitting in church right now who filled out a membership card and said a prayer that aren't saved you can be a car. You can you can uh, you can uh, uh, you know, just because you're 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 in a garage doesn't make you a car. Just because you're in a church doesn't mean you're a Christian. I'm very concerned about this. Listen, there are warlocks out there prophesying in the name of Jesus. They practice divination. They prophesy accurately out of out of uh, div uh, familiar spirits, and they have big bright smiles. Like I said, nice suits of clothes. And some of them have very big platforms, especially in the internet world. My God. Another word for a warlock is a conjurer or a wizard. They claim to, listen to me, they claim to practice prophetic arts, but they practice magic arts, okay? This is different. Do you remember when Moses uh, was charged with going to Pharaoh and telling him, hey, let my people go? Well, Moses, you know, would throw his staff on the ground. He would put his hand in his, you know, his, his, his cloak and he would pull it out and it would be leprous. These magicians, these sorcerers, these false ones, these conjurers, these wizards, these warlocks who served under Pharaoh were able to do almost all the same types of manifestations. We see that there is a power of darkness, and it, and it can. The Bible says that it, it, you know that, that there will be lying signs and wonders. What is it? There's still signs and wonders, but they're false. They're false, and so we have to understand the time we're living in now. But Elimus, the wise man, for that is the translation of his name, which he had given himself. We're talking about Bar Jesus. He also called himself Elimus. That was his Aramaic name. But Elimus, the wise man. For that is a translation of his name, which he had given to himself, opposed them, seeking to keep the proconsul from accepting the faith. Now, why would he do that? 
because he doesn't want him to get saved. And this Alemus, this Bar Jesus, this warlock, this wizard, this conjurer, this diviner, this, this, this omen reader, this fortune teller would have been out of a job. So he didn't want to Paul, have Paul and Barnabas go. Now notice here, the Bible said he had given that name to himself. He had given that name to himself, Bar Jesus, Alemus, whatever you want to call him. He gave that name to himself. Warlocks, sorcerers, false prophets give themselves a name. They're not submitted to the name above all names, nor have they been called by the one to whom every the to, who, who has the name to which every knee must bow and every uh, mouth confess that he is Lord. They gave themselves the same. Jesus did not call them into fivefold ministry. Jesus did not call them into prophethood. Jesus did not call them at all except to get saved. He calls all to get saved. He, he would like that none would perish, but everyone would come to the saving knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ as the Son of God who paid the price for your sin, was crucified on a tree, died, was resurrected on the third day, and now is ascended in heaven. He calls all to repentance. All are welcome. But this warlock, this Alemus, this bar Jesus gave himself this name. These people gave themselves a name and they're trying to make a name for themselves. These warlocks are trying to make a name for themselves. Listen, verse 9. We are definitely not going to get, get through this whole thing today, but I'll be back tomorrow. Verse 9. But Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with and controlled by the Holy Ghost, looked steadily at Elimus. I like this. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have boldness. Paul was not intimidated by this warlock. He wasn't, he wasn't intimidated by this wizard. He wasn't intimidated by this false prophet. Paul knew his authority. That's why the demons, that's why the sons of Sceva, they said, we cast out these devils in the name of Jesus whom Paul knows. Paul had a name. Everybody knew that Paul knew Jesus. But Paul understood his authority. Listen, I'm not going to be intimidated by Christian warlocks. I don't care if you're in Europe or in Asia, or in Africa, or here in the U.S. I don't care where you are or where you're based. I'm not going to be intimidated by your Jezebelic, warlockish, wizard-like curses and spells. Not happening. I, Paul wasn't intimidated. That's our model in Scripture. And when the apostles were threatened, they went back to their own like precious faith company and said, Behold their threatenings, Lord. Now put us into put more boldness on us. Amen? Let's look how Paul described him. Verse 10. Paul said, he's looking at him. Paul said, you master in every form of deception and recklessness, unscrupulousness and wickedness. You son of the devil, you enemy of everything that is upright and good. Will you never stop perverting and making crooked the straight paths of the Lord and plotting against his salvation, uh, saving purposes? So now we've already, and just in case you didn't catch on, we've already uh, found two characteristics of these warlocks who are masquerading as, as prophets. Number one, they use the name of Jesus. Now they're still, so don't say, well, but they're, they're confessing Jesus. Well, the Bible says that no one, you know, can name Jesus unless they... You know what? A lot of people say Jesus all the time. They use his name in a profane way. You've heard it. Explicatories. People can say Jesus whether they're saved or not, whether they're false or true. These, 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 these warlocks masquerading as prophets, they're going to use the name Jesus. So don't let that cause you to put your guard down. Don't let that cause you to put away your discerner. Go ahead and go to the next step. Number two. These uh, warlocks, they call themselves by titles. They call themselves. Nobody called them. It's the same thing as Jezebel in the book of Revelation. The Bible says in Revelation 2 and 20, Jesus said, I have this thing against you, you church of Thyatira, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. Jezebel was not ordained. 
She was not commissioned. She was not released into ministry by the pastor, the apostle of that church. No, she called herself a prophetess. She called herself that. She took that name for herself. And this warlock, Elimus, bar Jesus, took this name himself. And he named the name of Jesus. He just wanted to be close to the people in power and authority. He had the ear of the proconsul, and he blocked the way of the Lord. Now let's review what Paul said. And we're going to stop with this one. And I'm going to give you the second half tomorrow because I've got to go. He called him, Paul called him a master of every form of deception, recklessness, unscrupulousness, and wickedness. A master of every form. That's deep. That's like the doctrine. That's like the depths of Satan right there. This is not just someone who practices these things. It's, it, 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 it's someone who has mastered them. You know, a master of something is not just one who's learning. A master of something is not just one who has uh, practiced for a while or it's a hobby. A master of something is someone who's been practicing for a long, long time. We see masters in, 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 in music and masters of art. We call their work masterpieces. And they practiced and they practiced and they sacrificed. These false prophets, these wizards, these warlocks that are masquerading as uh, prophets, they are masters at what they do. They are masters in every form of deception. They are masters in recklessness. They go from church to church making huge messes, prophesying all these things to people that are not true, hurting movements, splitting churches, ruining marriages. They are masters in unscrupulousness. They have no scruples. They know how to lie. They're really good liars. They're deceiving. They're seducing. And they're masters in every form of wickedness. They introduce strife. I'm telling you what, this is a real issue. I have four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got four or five more of these that I want to go over with you. But I want to stop and I want to pray. And I want you to leave your questions in the comments about this so that when I pick this back up, I can then answer your questions. Amen. I want to remind you of a couple of things that I'm going to pray because I'm going to pray against any backlash or any. I'm going to pray for your discernment. I have launched uh, the free book sewing campaign. It's called, I'm giving away a book called Angels of Abundant Harvest. I'm just giving it away. Um, I talked to my publisher today about getting more discounted books because they're, you know, they, they've got more. And I said, you know, would you just please, they wanted to charge me like a whole lot for each book. I said, would you just please give me this kind? I'm giving these away. I just want to give them away. And they're sitting in your warehouse. And, you know, if you've got some extras and you could just send them to me. So thank you to Charisma House. But I'm giving these away. We're, we have prison initiatives. We're, we're give, putting Bibles and books in jails and prisons as part of my Operation Liberation. But I want you to get a, a taste of, of this uh, free stuff. So I love to give away things. I love to sew. Go to tinyurl.com slash angelbookfree. tinyurl.com slash angelbookfree. The book is free. If you feel like sowing a seed, it's called the, uh, the uh, Releasing the Angels of Abundant Harvest. If you feel like sowing a seed and you want to, you know, leverage what you're going to learn in that book right now, by sow then that's fine. But it's not necessary. You can get this book for free if you live in the United States. I'm not mailing it all over the world because it's like $25 to mail a book. I'm sorry. I'll find another way to bless you all in the nations. But if you're in the U.S., tinyurl.com slash angel book free. You get one. Don't order 10. Please don't. Somebody order like 100. Don't do that. That's Don't do that. That's greedy, okay? I know that they're not for you, but we want to bless everybody. Tinyurl.com slash angels book free. Angel book free, uh, singular. Angel book free. Please go get that before they run out. I ordered some more. I don't know how many more I'm going to be able to get. Um, you know, but go get it while you can. There's a lot of free events for you on my Eventbrite. JenniferLeClaire.Eventbrite.com. Lots of free stuff there for you to take advantage of. I am launching in March the School of the Apostles. This is for believers who want to learn how to move in an apostolic anointing. What is an apostle? How do you benefit from an apostle? What does the apostolic grace do for you? I want you to get involved in this. This is not free, but it is at schoolofthespirit.tv. And there is lots of free stuff also at schoolofthespirit.tv. You've got the schools um, of the prophetic, uh, school spiritual warfare, uh, the Dream Code Intensive, plus a lot of free stuff. So go there and check it out. I want to remind you of one more thing. I'm going to pray. We are going to Israel really soon. If you want to be part of this prophetic prayer journey, I want you to go to Tiny 
URL.com slash Israel with Jennifer. We're going to do some spiritual warfare. If you love Israel, go with it. We're going to prophesy. We're going to seek the Lord. We're going to have encounters with the Lord. I had an encounter last time I was there in Israel in the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm going to be teaching you, training you, praying for you. Listen, go to tinyurl.com slash Israel with Jennifer and get involved in that. All right. If you want to sow a seed today because it's blessed you, jenniferleclair.org slash give. While you're there, sign up for my newsletter because you get a free MP3 when you do. Now let me pray for your discernment. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to help us, Lord, to discern these false prophets, these wizards, these sorcerers, these conjurers, these magic artists, God, in the name of Jesus. Increase our discernment. Give us a check in our spirit, God, if we are straying away from your truth. God, instill in us an even greater love for the truth, an even greater love for your people, for your glory, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to go to my website, jenniferleclair.org slash peace with God. And I want you to learn how he can become your savior and your Lord, just like he is mine. God bless you. I'll be back with part two on this probably tomorrow, maybe Monday. Look out for it. Make sure you follow me online. Bless you.